Let us pray. Gracious Father, we would have been lost and condemned had you not redeemed us from sin by the blood of your only Son. Make us ever mindful of this redemption until we join the saints in glory who sing your praises continually. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn. Our theme today is Jesus is our Redeemer. A reading from Exodus chapter 6. But the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand he will send them out, and with a strong hand he will drive them out of his land. God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by, but by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land in which they lived as sojourners. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the people of Israel, whom the Egyptians hold as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. 
I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. Moses spoke thus to the people of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. A reading from Titus, chapter 2. St. Paul writes, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Let's stand in honor of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is from Mark chapter 10. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them but it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. You may be seated for the hymn.
In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. Who is Jesus? Well, two weeks ago, we told you that he is the Word of God, the Word by whom the creation was made. Last week, we said he's the first fruits of a new creation. He is the resurrection and the life. And today, our theme is Redeemer. Jesus is your Redeemer. That word redeem means to buy back. And it's a word used in the slave trade. To redeem refers to buying a slave, possibly buying that slave's freedom. And in the Bible, that's the connotation, that although you were a slave, you are no more, for God has purchased you by Jesus' blood. He has rescued you. He has ransomed you. He has freed you from the enemy's power forever. And in Christ, you are truly free. The word redemption is also an important word in the story of the Exodus. If you remember, God's people were slaves in Egypt, slaves of Pharaoh, living in brutal conditions. But what did God do? The text says that God redeemed them. He rescued them from slavery. He paid for their freedom. Likewise, later in the Bible, the people were slaves again, this time to Babylon. So what did God do? He redeemed them. In the book of Isaiah, I counted at least 13 times where God calls himself the Redeemer, the one who will rescue from Babylon. The emphasis here is on God's holy might, that he is Lord of all creation, way more powerful than our opponents or our problems, and he is ready to save. But then there's a third slavery discussed by the Bible. Because frankly, those first two don't apply to you. You're not slaves of Egypt or Babylon. So why do you need redeemed? Because you were slaves of sin. Because you were slaves of the devil. Because you were slaves to the fear of death. But I have good news. The Redeemer of Israel has become your Redeemer by the cross. Colossians 1 says, God has delivered us from the domain of darkness, and he has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. (laughs) If sins are forgiven you are no longer enslaved. It's as simple as that. Your redemption is the forgiveness of your sins. And at what price did God pay for this redemption? At the cost of his own son's blood. Whereas in Exodus, the redemption cost was the firstborn of Egypt and the Passover lambs, In this final redemption, this once and for all redemption, buying you was most costly, for it took the blood of Jesus. By that blood, now upon you, death passes over. By that blood, the devil, our Pharaoh, is defeated. His hosts are drowned in the baptismal font. By Jesus' blood, you are set free to be the people of God. You have redemption, the forgiveness of your sins, and you no longer have to live in the fear of death and hell. For you have been promised, guaranteed, eternal life. 
just think about the image of a man on death row when he discovers that he's been fully pardoned. Think of the image of a person going to debtor's prison and then he hears that his full debt has been paid. This is the joy of redemption. Jesus rescues us from the awful reality that should have been. And he invites us to freely live in his kingdom as the children of God. What a glorious exchange. He takes the death you deserve. He gives you the life that only he deserves. Thanks be to God. This week I was looking through all these redemption verses in the Bible, and something really struck me. In the Old Testament passages, the emphasis on redemption is always on God's power. God is stronger than the Egyptians and their false gods. God is stronger than the Babylonians. God keeps on reminding us just how powerful he is, the creator of the universe. He can handle these puny little enemies. But then in the New Testament, Redeemer has a little bit different emphasis. It becomes a word almost of humility that the powerful Lord now comes in lowliness to serve you as Redeemer. For he came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Yes, the mighty Redeemer will redeem by becoming the ransom price, by becoming nothing, by dying the death that you deserve. The Redeemer will be betrayed, indeed sold at the prices of a slave, 30 pieces of silver. The Redeemer will be mocked, belittled, tortured, killed in order to free you from the enemy and all that had enslaved us. Isn't it remarkable that the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the only true God, this one took on the form of a servant, became like a slave, and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Friends, in my life, in my life, I find it hard to serve others, even when they're thankful. <laughs> for me, it's hard to be selfless, even for someone I love. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still his enemies, Christ died for us. The Redeemer made himself nothing. Nothing in order to redeem us. And for this reason, his name will be exalted forever. Do you know what the people of heaven say about Jesus? We find this in the book of Revelation. We sing it in the song, This is the Feast. The people in heaven say, Worthy are you, for you were slain. And by your blood, you ransomed for God a people from every tribe, language, people, and nation. They praise the Redeemer for his death. While on earth, <laughs> we're discussing things like coronavirus, quarantines. In heaven, they only discuss redemption. Indeed, no matter how much time passes, they're still just amazed that he did it. And they're amazed how he did it. For we will forever marvel at his love. What kind of love is this? On earth, while we are troubled by so many things, while we are distracted by so many cares, in heaven... They sing of redemption continually, and they rejoice. Oh, why are we so troubled? Do we not know about the joy that will be? 
Hear what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. The flame shall not consume you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your, your Savior. So fear not, for you have a Redeemer. Amen. Now before we collect our offering, I'd like to add one thing to the service. I want to turn to page 322 and 323. And I want to confess the second article of the Creed because I think it beautifully summarizes uh, the idea of Redeemer. So page 322, it's at the bottom. The second article, what does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. At this time, you can bring forward your offerings. After the service, if you could leave your hymnal where you sat, this will help us know uh, where to spend the most time cleaning and make sure everything's disinfected so that no one has any fear coming to church. We now stand for prayer.
Gracious Father, we praise you, for you have redeemed us sinners from our slavery by the blood of your only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And you have made us a people from all peoples and tribes and languages, your saints, your forgiven, redeemed, and sanctified people. Grant to all of us hearts of repentance that by your Holy Spirit we may remain in the true faith and never return to captivity. Father, we also pray for our enemies, those who do not know you, for they are still captive to the true enemy, sin, death, and the devil. By your gospel and sacraments, free them so that they may join us in singing your praises and that we may all sing of your redemption in eternity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.